What we think of as like natural history art, it really begins in the 16th century in Europe with people like Durer. Before that, you would have had like chat books telling you how to paint a lion. By the time Durer comes along, it's like 1515 or something, he's drawing a rabbit from life, a clump of grass from life. And that whole thing that I ended up riffing on and recombining in my entire body of work is based on basically this period of time. It starts with that and it goes rolling right through the 19th century. One of the valuable things for me as an artist to see when I see contemporary and old master stuff is just the incredible craftsmanship of those guys and how much I can learn from it. This rhinoceros was a specific rhinoceros that ended up in this Durer -like woodcut. And the thing about that Durer woodcut is that it was the first image of an Indian rhinoceros in Europe. For 300 years, it informed what Europeans thought a rhinoceros looked like. And the fact of the matter is that Durer never laid eyes on a rhinoceros himself. The Portuguese were trading with India and put a, a rhinoceros on a ship. While the, the rhinoceros was in Lisbon, somebody sketched it and described it briefly. And then the rhinoceros actually was then put on a ship, chained to the deck, and it caught a storm and it sunk with that rhinoceros on board. When Durer got the sketch and the description, one of the things in the description apparently was that an Indian rhinoceros looks as if it's sort of plated in a way. He put this sort of animal together out of existing animals that he knew based on the description. So he makes it look like a crustacean. The great irony of that is that this animal sunk into the ocean and it's almost like a horror film that it was reborn in, as Durer's rhino as like half crab, half rhino monster, you know? So what I wanted to do is I have, a, there's a lot of different POVs that you can have in a work of art. And the point of view I wanted to take was the actual rhinoceros. What did he go through? And so I do a couple of different tricks. Like I paint it in a sort of style, like it's a Renaissance painting, but I wanted to paint the animal life size so you could feel the presence of such an enormous animal and the bulk of the water and the shift and the drowning of this thing, like the vivid recreation at the moment. I'm not interested in painting an animal as it lives its life without human beings. I'm, I'm interested in how this history that you're illustrating in the show played itself out. You see what human beings are capable of, which is the greatest achievements. And that's why people like don't almost get the old masters now because they don't even know what they're looking at as far as like how much human energy went into producing this stuff. It blows the contemporary art scene away.